let's turn to someone who has insight into uh, into Hillary Clinton's past and into what she's done and what she may be doing as part of the Clinton political machine. We welcome Daniel Halper, who's an editor for the Weekly Standard, and he is author of the new book, Clinton Inc., as in Clinton Incorporated, the audacious rebuilding of a political machine. Daniel, we welcome you to America's Forum. It's great to be here. Thanks for having me. So, Daniel, uh, the relationship between Hillary Clinton and President Obama. It has been very interesting when you look back to the campaign year of 2008, to her time as Secretary of State, and now to her time as a prospective presidential candidate in 2016. Um, how has that relationship changed over the past few years? Well, if you look back even further, of course, the 2008 campaign was, there was full of acrimony between President Obama and uh, Hillary Clinton. Hillary was the inevitable candidate then, much like she is now. She uh, expected to, to win, you know, just be coordinated and to just win the Democratic nomination, just be handed the Democratic nomination. That didn't happen. There was a lot of tension between President Obama and between Hillary Clinton, but Hillary, after losing and after Obama finally won the presidency, realized that her fortunes uh, would benefit greatly to being a loyal foot soldier in the Democratic Party, that it was the Democratic Party who had chosen the person they didn't know over the person they did know. And so she needed to get Democratic support, so that's why she went into the administration. Meanwhile, Barack Obama realizes that if Hillary Clinton's left in the Senate, she's going to create lots of problems from the outside, and it's best to bring your enemies as close as you can and to just basically suffocate her inside the Obama administration, and that's exactly what they did. Now you're sort of seeing a little political expediency, some calculations, and you're seeing President uh, Obama sort of uh, be put into his place a little bit as Hillary Clinton tries to separate herself from the worst parts of his foreign policy. Daniel, how did Hillary Clinton return to political prominence or did she ever really leave? Well, they left. I mean, they were down in the dumps when they left the White House or as they were leaving the White House. People forget how just how scandal ridden the Clinton White House was and how unpopular Hillary Clinton was after Hillary care. Uh, one thing that Hillary that helped Hillary Clinton tremendously was weirdly enough the Monica Lewinsky scandal. Her poll numbers, she saw a rise as she was portrayed as the victim in that. She saw her poll numbers rise. She was able to go to a very liberal state, uh, New York, and settle there where she, where she would have a big Democratic, uh, Democratic base of donors and support as she contemplated a presidential run. But it took a lot of work, and it wasn't a foregone conclusion by any means. And even the 2000 election, which she ran for Senate, you know, she didn't do as well as Al Gore did in that state. She, she ran about 10 points worse. It wasn't a foregone conclusion. She worked her tail off, and that's why she's able to threaten to return to the White House now in 2016. Well, let's talk about the situation of uh, Hillary Clinton's political prospects. Uh, granted, she starts with some considerable advantages, as she did in 2008, if in fact she decides to run in 2016. But you mentioned that experience running for the U.S. Senate to succeed Daniel Patrick Moynihan uh, in New York State. In your opinion, is Hillary Clinton overrated as a political candidate? Absolutely. I mean, look, let's not, it works both ways. She is obviously the prohibitive front runner. Everything favors her. She probably has a 50-50 chance, which is actually very, very good uh, for a candidate, but she has major problems. One of the ones is what you mentioned previously in the intro into this uh, segment, which is this wealth problem. But it, I think that goes to a bigger problem, which is that she's not a good politician. She's not able to sort of portray herself the way she wants to be portrayed, by the way she wants people to understand her. And she's not a good grip and grinner. She's not a good speech maker. She's not good at those things in the way that her husband is or in the way that Barack Obama is. And I think that's a hindrance, and I'm not sure how she overcomes that because we're seeing on her book tour, uh, we're reminded about, about her shortcomings in that department. Now, that's not everything, and it can be overcome, but we're not sure exactly how she's going to do that. A couple of the other problems I highlight 
are Bill Clinton. He's both her biggest asset, but also her biggest liability. He's very reckless, and it's not even clear that he wants to go back to the White House. That could pose a big problem for Hillary Clinton. Uh, the other problem is Chelsea Clinton. Chelsea has emerged as a political force in her own right. She's taken a major role in the Clinton Inc. and the Clinton Company, and that could pose huge problems for Hillary Clinton as she continues on this presidential run. Daniel, I want to backtrack a little bit. You mentioned Monica Lewinsky. Um, I actually have two questions for you. I want to backtrack. You mentioned Monica Lewinsky. Yeah. Now, with her resurfacing now, do you think that will change anything for her? I don't know. You know, what I what struck me in reporting my book is everybody in the news media especially wants to, and, and uh, also Republican operatives, they all say, oh, look, Monica Lewinsky, that's old news. It's not an issue. I don't know. We can't really get into this. It's just, it's not going to help us. It's just going to hurt us because they saw Hillary Clinton benefit from this. The weird thing is that Monica Lewinsky has been ever present in the Clinton's mind, that the Monica Lewinsky, the threat that she's going to be resurfaced, the threat that this scandal is going to come back up, that has, uh, I detail in the book, it has changed the way they act in certain situations and it has made them not uh, Daniel, in, let, be involved let me in pick up TV on, on, specials. Daniel, let me pick up on a broader theme that I've heard about for years in, yeah. terms, of, uh, in terms of national tickets and at the risk of making a sexist observation. You mentioned the adroit uh, ability of even a, a President Obama who is uh, thought of in many cases as almost, well, he was compared to Star Trek's Mr. Spock for being such a cool customer in 2008, at least in terms of demeanor during debates. But you talk about uh, right. Mr. Obama in a crowd. We, of course, saw the previous President Clinton being able to interact in a crowd. Are there any American female candidates who you've seen, whether Sarah Palin or Hillary Clinton or Susana Martinez in New Mexico, any women who are good at what you call grip and grinning, going into the uh, into the big crowds, taking the, the mechanics of politics that heretofore has been reserved for, for men, is there someone in the American political scene who is adept at that, who happens to be female? Well, that's, that's a good question. Uh, actually, and you sound a lot like Democratic strategist Bob Shrum, who I also interviewed for the book. And he said, when I said, you know, Hillary Clinton's not such a good politician, he said, look, you're, you're judging politicians based on what you know, which are male politicians, but female politicians are different. Perhaps that's the case. I would venture to guess it's not. I think Sarah Palin is very good on the stump. I think she is good at grip and grinning, that people who have met her and who have interacted with her on the campaign trail come away with a good impression. And I think that's what you want. I think that's what a good grip and grinner does. I think uh, Liz Warren might be surprisingly good. I think Nikki Haley, the governor of South Carolina, I think uh, is pretty good at that sort of thing. I think there are women politicians who are good at it. Hillary, it, Hillary Clinton can escape that. And you're right. It might come if somebody's criticizing, it might say, well, you're just criticizing her because she's a woman and that's a threat that might uh, that people might face as as they criticize her but the fact is is people meet her and they don't necessarily come away with a good impression and I think that's a problem for her Daniel Halper the author of Clinton Inc the audacious rebuilding of a political machine thank you for sharing some of the uh, the wheels and the cogs of said machine and we hope to talk to you again in the not too distant future thanks very much Daniel Thank you. Well, some interesting insights there in a mm -hmm. book that uh, is picking up a lot of notice. We're not going to ask you to write a book, uh, but we wouldn't mind it. How many, how many words do you get away with on a tweet? I'm not oh, sure. Gosh, I don't even know. Suffice it to say, just a few. Take a few words, tweet us at Newsmax TV, hashtag America's Forum. You can also go to NewsmaxTV.com slash comment. And do not forget Facebook. You can weigh in there. There's even a page for our program, America's Forum. We'll continue after this.